So here we've got a typical situation and a problem we all face. So in your physics classroom and you're being attacked by giant robot bugs, the obvious thing to do is to measure its velocity so you can determine how much time you need to run away. So you set up a course and you let it run the course and you time it. Ah, it's coming at me. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, uh, one meter, set up about one meter course, we time it, and it takes about three seconds. We use a stopwatch for that. So we list our knowns, distance equals one meter, and the meter stick goes out there to a couple of decimal places, one meter. We time it, it gives us a hundredth of a second, so three hundredths of a second. Our equation for average velocity is distance over time. So we plug in our knowns with units meters per three seconds and then we pull out our calculator and that's when the problem occurs because when you hit the enter you get point three 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 and depending on your calculator these could go on forever it's a repeating number meters per second so what do you write on your paper how many of these decimal places and what do they all mean well, let's go out into the real world. Here we are at Industrial Precision. It's a machine shop in Oswego, New York. And there's Bill Gallagher. He runs the place. And he's looking at the specs of a blueprint. When people send in blueprints to have things made, they tell the dimensions, but they also tell the tolerances. Here we've got 6.813 in the middle, but down at the bottom it tells you what the tolerances are. And the tolerances are how precise those measurements have to be. So he's going to let us go out into the shop and look at some stuff. Well, in a machine shop you can grind stuff away and a grinder can bring things down to a millimeter or so, which is pretty good. Pretty good tolerances there. And you get pretty shiny, but in a lot of stuff they want it more precise. Now in a machine shop you can also weld things, which in fact adds metal. So you can lift things up, which eventually has to be ground back down again. But welding is cool, so I, I thought I'd include some shots of welding. This is great. If it wasn't for the camera, you wouldn't be able to see. You'd be blind right now without the dark glasses. And for a big object like that, you can use a tape measure, which measures down to a millimeter. Now let's measure the length of some things. How would you do that? Well, here we're on a lathe, and we're cutting something to a certain length. And you cut off a little bit of metal maybe a half a millimeter they're cutting off there. And then what you do is uh, when you've cut off a little layer, you back your machine off and it's calibrated, or the machine is designed, to cut off a certain amount each time. So he adjusts it and he gets it set up. Now how does he know how much he's adjusted it? Well, he's got a special gauge, that little uh, pressure gauge, and it can actually measure small indentations and it turns it into an orbital thing. So by checking, he can determine if it's the right length. He checks it with the actual part it's supposed to be flat with, and and there it is, flat. Here's another piece. It's going to be checked to within a thousandths. So it's a very, very expensive ruler. The ruler has little marks on the edge that check for alignment. Now here's a device that'll check to a ten thousandths. It's a very expensive device and it adjusts and you find some zero level. It's a big heavy granite table which is very flat. He marks a zero and then you can measure the height above that zero point. And you can put something in there and you can measure the length and with this device you can measure the length to a ten thousandths, four decimal places. Very expensive to get those four decimal places. Now a lot of times you measure diameters of things and here's another lathe that's cutting it's cutting a very very small little bit as it moves along it cuts just a very tiny bit you can tell how far it's in by using one of those pressure gauge things pushes in but he has to stop it on a regular basis and check it with a device called a micrometer and a micrometer is an adjustable measuring tool and he can check to see how many thousandths he is. And by using a vernier scale, he can adjust it and check exactly what the measurement is. 
Now, if they need to get even more precise, instead of using a lathe, which cuts metal, they use a grinding tool, which can polish, basically polish off a little bit more metal, and they can get it to very, very precise tolerances. Now, you would get your micrometers from a, a tool crib or from a storage place, and all of those have to be calibrated. To calibrate them, there are a set of standards called gauge blocks. You can see the gauge blocks are calibrated to the nearest thousands. And that's a very precise measurement. That's a very expensive set of gauge blocks there. But you would take your micrometers, and you would find a gauge block, and you'd measure the length of that. And you could test to see if your micrometers are precise because they're physical objects. You drop them or you just move them around and they come out of alignment. So you check and uh, you would align your micrometer and you can adjust that micrometer a little bit. Now we've got another piece of equipment that automatically checks to a ten thousandths. This is a very expensive milling machine. and It's set up with both X and Y coordinates and you would zero it and then you could know exactly to the ten thousandths how precise your measurement is. Very, very expensive. So what did we do? We measured with a wooden meter stick and a little stopwatch. So we're going to be happy with the hundredth. And that's going to be our answer. Well, good luck. Remember, those things cost money. Every zero you print costs money.